Hello, I'm Luga Torix, and today I'm going to be discussing the best ending to Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas is a legendary game, a true fan favourite, packed with moral choices and game-changing decisions. The wonderful thing about New Vegas is that there's no single perfect option, otherwise I wouldn't have to make this video. Any of the endings can be considered the best. Each ending benefits different groups of people and appeals to different ideologies but there's one that I believe to be the best of all of them for the entire population of New Vegas. So I'm going to briefly discuss each faction and their respective endings and then compare them to reveal the best of them all. So let's go. We're going to start with the NCR, otherwise known as the New California Republic. So the NCR, in quotation marks, are a democratic federation based in California with their jurisdiction stretching as far as Nevada and Oregon. They are seemingly the most liberal option, with little sexism as evidenced by their appointment of women in senior positions such as Colonel Cassandra Moore, a general acceptance of ghouls and mutants, for example many of the NCL veteran rangers are ghouls if you check. They have a good knowledge of irrigation with the sharecropper farms and transport, an example being the monorail at Camp McCarran. However, it can be argued that they bully weaker settlements into integrating leading to high taxation, which suggests a lack of a liberal democracy. Openly carrying arms, prostitution and gambling are not permitted within city limits. This is referenced in a Fallout 2 bulletin board if you're interested. You can argue that this is a good thing. Debauchery and overconsumption led to the Great War originally, yet a lack of freedom could lead to further resistance and could lower the quality of life. For the pacifists among you, the NCR aren't exactly desirable. Their insistence on killing Pacer to resolve the troubles with the kings is an example of over-militarism, although this quest can be solved diplomatically thanks to the courier. Also, the NCR are prepared to literally backstab Mr. House, who they signed the New Vegas Treaty with, by ordering the courier to kill him. So the NCR endings. Things end well with the Brotherhood of Steel, unless you destroyed the bunker of course, as an official truce is declared. The boomers survive, but if Valare is uncompleted, the NCR launches several unsuccessful attacks on Nellis. Good Springs sees more trade, but has higher taxes, which kind of cancel it out. The Kings either maintain independence or get kicked out of Freeside, depending on the Courier's actions in GI Blues. The Great Khan suffer, having to relocate and possibly being forced out as far as Idaho. Prim is rebuilt as a major stopping point, but of course there are high taxes. Nevertheless, increased trade and protection is good for the town. So this ending is overall mixed. Towns suffer from high taxes, but they benefit from protection. Smaller factions such as the Kings have their fate decided more by the Courier's action than the NCR, which is interesting. Okay, so a controversial one next, Caesar's Legion. The Legion is an autocratic, traditionalist, imperialist, slaver society founded by Edward Sallow, otherwise known as Caesar. The first impression you get of the Legion isn't exactly positive. The folks of Good Springs aren't exactly complimentary towards them. The Legion are a bunch of savages though. No idea why they'd want the dam. Probably plan on destroying it or something. And the first time you come into contact with the Legion is at Nipton, where you see crucified prisoners and a destroyed town. The Legion wants to unite humanity under a single totalitarian banner, which can be argued as a good thing. If everyone is forced to believe in the same ideology, conflict will not occur due to indoctrination. The Legion hates consumerism. Considering that high consumerism arguably led to the Great War, this can be seen as a fairly logical ideology. However, there's a serious lack of freedom, for example no alcohol consumption or chems, but again this can be argued as a good thing. Addiction is inefficient for societal growth and only leads to suffering in the long run. The Legion refuses medical science, arguing that long lives come at the cost of other humans. Life expectancy would certainly fall under the Legion. But worst of all, this is hypocritical considering that Caesar himself has an auto dock in his personal tent. The Legion are undoubtedly cruel, Nipton being a primary example. Crucifixions, gladiator fights and slavery are examples of cruelty, but can be effective in maintaining control. In the end, the Legion enters the Strip, pushing out the NCR and enslaving slash killing most of the population. However, it is noted that civilization eventually comes to the Mojave, but not necessarily a peaceful, prosperous one. The Boomers can get destroyed if Valare isn't completed, but if it is, then Caesar is wary of them and leaves them be. The Brotherhood are routed from the Hidden Valley or their bunker destroyed, so they suffer from this ending. 
The original Caesar offers the followers of the Apocalypse a safe passage out, but if Legate Lanius replaces Caesar, he is less merciful, exterminating them completely. The Legion largely ignores Good Springs. Many leave, but the old and stubborn remain. Ironically, I would argue that this is better than the NCR ending for them, considering that they maintain their autonomy and low taxes. The Khans are either forcibly integrated or ruthlessly killed, depending on whether the alliance was broken, and the kings die out regardless of the ending. Overall, there is undoubtedly a lot of bloodshed associated with this ending. Some would argue that this is for the greater good, but to others, this suffering is inexcusable. Up next is Mr. House. Mr. House is the sole proprietor of the New Vegas Strip, founder of the now-defunct Robco Industries and responsible for civilizing the New Vegas tribes into various casinos. House is a charismatic diplomat, evidenced by him negotiating and signing the New Vegas Treaty with the NCR. Unlike the NCR or Legion, whose modus operandi is to solve conflicts militarily, House sees a need for diplomacy before military force. He rebuilt the strip, showing mercy to Vault 21. He originally intended to cement the whole vault up, but after pleadings from the claustrophobic Sarah Weintraub, mercifully, he agreed to leave the top level unchanged. His nickname is not a home, given by the Emeritus. This is due to his tendency to stay neutral in a strip. This is a question of his authority and control, potentially, which we'll discuss later. What a lot of players are unaware of is House's plans to the future. Listen to this. Give me 20 years and I'll reignite the high technology development sectors. 50 years and I'll have people in orbit. 100 years and my colony ships will be heading for the stars to search for planets unpolluted by the wrath and folly of a bygone generation. This is a forward-thinking view of humanity's future, full of hope and prosperity rather than destruction under the Legion or taxation under the NCR. The endings for House are very interesting. His Securitron army pushed the Legion and NCR out of New Vegas, meaning the streets are orderly and controlled. This opposes my previous point about a prosperous future, a matter which will surely remain ambiguous at this point anyway. If the Courier is at good or neutral karma, the narrator states that House keeps New Vegas stable and secure for future generations. This suggests a long-term solution, which will be more consistent than the Legion and definitely more consistent than Yes Man's ending. House shows little interest in the Boomers, but the Courier is forced to wipe out the Brotherhood. Good Springs is monitored via Victor. This could be perceived as bad. Excessive monitoring suggests a lack of freedom. But considering at the beginning of the game, Good Springs was about to be wiped out by Powder Gangers, this precaution may actually aid the town's survival in the long run. The Kings are wiped out unless a full-scale war with the NCR is incited in GI Blues, in which case House leaves them alone. The fact that House shows mercy for those who have helped him, or at least attacked his enemies, shows a wider range of thinking for House, opposed to other factions. Overall, House's ending is mixed. Apart from specific groups like the Brotherhood, many benefit from increased order, and humanity's hope for the future could be high considering House's ambitious aspirations. Finally, we reached Yes Man. Yes Man is a Securitron who served as Benny's personal assistant. He is programmed to do exactly as he's told, therefore helping the courier once Benny is eliminated. Discussing the morality of Yes Man himself is difficult, considering he's a robot and programmed to do exactly as he's told. Therefore, the Securitron is only as morally correct as the person controlling him. However, during the Yes Man quests, the Securitron seems to be the instigator for ideas. For example, he doesn't suggest being put into Mr. House's mainframe. He tells the courier to do so, which raises interesting questions. So, on to the independent endings. New Vegas reasserts itself as an independent power in the Mojave. If the Securitron army is upgraded, anarchy ensues as order cannot be maintained. If the army is upgraded, chaos ends quickly on the streets. The dam is rendered inoperable, which can be seen as a good thing as there'll be no more fighting over it, but obviously less power could result in hardships for certain groups of people. The boomers remain unharmed at Nellis, the Brotherhood regain Helios 1 and begin taking advanced technology from the Mojave. Good Springs thrives as more visitors to the Strip means more trade revenue, this is arguably the best ending for the town. The Kings maintain control of Freeside, the area becoming one of the most stable regions of New Vegas. The followers of the Apocalypse become overburdened with casualties and struggle to provide the most basic of services. This clearly suggests that this ending results in plenty of bloodshed 
and a distinct lack of peace. The most interesting thing about the Yes Man ending is what he says after the final mission is completed. I didn't want to make a big deal about this until after we won, but, well, I found some code snippets in one of Mr. House's data banks that will let me, um, reprogram my personality to be a little more assertive, basically. So that's what I'm going to be doing, and it's going to take me a while, so it'll seem like I'm offline. But don't worry, everything will be okay. This clearly implies that Yes Man could potentially become a dictator of sorts. This is ambiguous, however. Would he essentially become a second Mr. House? Would he attempt to maintain control by force like the Legion? Would he maybe be a benevolent and beneficial leader for New Vegas? It's hard to decide whether this ending is good or bad based solely off a single statement. Yes Man may not even be able to become assertive, making the statement redundant. Even if he could, as it isn't specified how he would run the strip, the fate of New Vegas remains unclear. However, if Yes Man is unable to become assertive, then the fate of New Vegas could potentially fall into the hands of whoever finds him, which leads to a variety of eventualities. So here is my conclusion, and to explain it I'm enlisting the help of a diagram. On the far right we have the Legion, and I've called them Overt Dictators. This means that they clearly run under a dictatorship. Nobody is under an illusion of democracy, and their ideology is clear to all who know of them. This can be considered as good. Their control is unquestioned, creating a prospect of social order and obedience. A single leader means that there is decisive decision making in the Mojave, and with everyone working under a clear, single banner, opposition from elsewhere is unlikely to be a threat, therefore reducing the prospect of future wars against other factions. However, the brutality required to enact an overt authoritarian system is extreme, resulting in suffering for many. A lack of freedom can reduce the quality of life for many, and a lack of wide-range thinking means that there is a lack of diversity and varying prospects for the Mojave. On the other end of the spectrum is the NCR, who I have labelled as covert dictators. In my opinion, the NCR are authoritarians and an illusion of democracy. High taxation, lack of personal freedoms, forcible integrations of settlements such as Prim, this doesn't sound like democracy to me. However, the NCR appear to be a democratic federation, therefore rendering them covert authoritarians or covert dictators. As Caesar points out, President Tandy has served over 10 terms. Is he any less of a dictator than Caesar? The benefits of covert dictatorships are that people live in the hope of freedom and democracy, therefore improving the quality of life. There is less brutality, but order is maintained through illusion. However, this way of control is deceitful, and not too different to the Legion in reality. If people have the ability to question their leader, who wishes to have total control, conflicts can occur. Therefore, there is less stability than under the Legion. Both the NCR and Legion are extreme examples, with good and bad aspects to their method of rule. So surely the middle ground is the best option. The middle ground would benefit from both forms of control. Well, the middle ground is Mr. House. Mr. House is the sole proprietor of the Strip and the owner of a powerful Securitron army. He was unelected, but powerful, thus rendering him a dictator or authoritarian. However, varying levels of control are allowed through his rule. The tribes have a good level of control over their respective casinos, as evidenced by the Emeritus nickname of Not at Home. Good Springs and Prim have decent levels of autonomy under House, certainly more than under the Legion or NCR. Therefore, House has the benefits of being overt, with his army and control over the dam and strip, but allows a correct level of autonomy to certain groups like the casino tribes or independent settlements of New Vegas. House is the best of both worlds, and my preferred option. Only one question remains. What of Yes Man? The truth is, he doesn't really fit on this scale. The scale is levels of authority, levels of dictatorship. But Yes Man's ending is that of anarchy and independence. So now we have a choice. A choice between a sliding scale of authority or anarchic independence. Independence may sound nice, but if it leads to bloodshed and a lack of progression, is it really the best option for society? So there you go. Mr House is the best ending in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, I will make more videos of this kind in the future. 
I'll be very interested to see what other people think, if enough people watch the video, um, to see what the various factions, because the truth is, there is no right option. It's varying degrees of right and wrong, and right and wrong are subjective. There is no objectivity in New Vegas. Your opinion is what counts. There are no facts. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you around.